As you can see, we're going to discuss uh, some graphing techniques, and the techniques are called transformations, or sometimes called translations. Now, recall earlier, I wanted you to be familiar with some basic functions, the graphs of some basic functions. And uh, those basic functions were f of x is equal to x squared, and the graph of that function real real roughly, and I'm just doing it roughly to remind you, the graph of that function looks like this. And uh, you're to be familiar with f of x is equal to x cubed, and I'll remind you the graph of that function looks something like this. Okay. And then uh, you're to be familiar with f of x is equal to the square root of x. And the graph of that function, as I remind you, looks something like this. And f of x is equal to the cube root of x. Now where I'm headed with this is knowing what these graphs look like, we should be able to sketch the graphs of some brand new functions. Let's see, what else do we have? f of x is equal to absolute value of x. And that graph looks something like this. You're supposed to remember these. And uh, f of x is equal to 1 over x. And that graph looks something like this. It had two different branches, didn't it? Okay. Anyway, now the idea, like I said, is, is knowing what these graphs look like, then uh, what, we would, what we would like to be able to do is do something that uh, is like this, sketch the graph up, something that's more complicated than these. Let's say the graph of y is equal to negative square root of x plus 3 plus 2. So the x plus 3 is under the square root and a negative in front. So the idea behind this is we start with the square root function. And knowing what the square root function looks like, what we want to know is how this plus 3 affects that graph how this minus sign affects that graph, and how this plus 2 affects that graph. If we know how each of those make an impact, then we'll know what our new graph looks like based on the original graph, square root of x. So that's the idea behind these transformations. Okay? Well, we'll start here in, in, uh, on the next page. We're going to talk about several different kinds of transformations. And uh, some of these are shifts. And we have two types of shifts. Shifts, a vertical shift. So a vertical shift is changing the graph, making the graph move up or down. Okay, vertical is up or down. We can have horizontal shifts. And that's making the original graph move left or right. Okay, left or right. And then we can have what are called uh, uh, reflections. Oops. Reflections. And reflections are flipping, if you will, when maybe we should call them flipping, but we don't. Uh, we can reflect about the x-axis, and that means flip about the x-axis. Or we can uh, reflect about the y-axis, so that means flip it across the y-axis. So reflections are, are making the graph move to the opposite, flip across. The appropriate axis. And then we can have, uh, now we can also have stretches or compresses. So we can have a vertical stretch or a vertical compress. That means when we talk about a vertical stretch, 
We're talking about pulling the graph further away, stretching it away from the x-axis. That's vertically. We can stretch it up, we can stretch it down. Compressing would be pushing the graph toward the x-axis, a vertical compress. We're either going to push it down toward the x-axis or push it up toward the x-axis. Now push, though, uh, not everything's pushed the same way. It's kind of like we're putting a board on it and compressing it downward. And then we can have horizontal stretches or compresses. Oops. Stretch or compress. So horizontally means stretch it away from the x axis, the y axis, pardon me, or compress it toward the y axis. So horizontally is away from or toward the y axis. Vertically is away from or toward the x axis. So <clears throat> let's start out with. Here's kind of my idea, and then, then we'll expand on this. Um, we want to see what the graphs, uh, what, what, the, what happens, what, what the numbers are, what causes these vertical uh, shifts or horizontal shifts. So let's, let's imagine, okay, in the middle we're going to have a basic function. Okay, so the idea is that we'll always start with a basic function and we'll be able to see, we may not be told what the basic function is, but uh, in this case we're going to start with y equal x squared. Now what I'm wanting to get to is what would the new function look like if we had a vertical shift? That is, we were making the graph of y equal x squared move up or down. Well, what causes a vertical shift is adding to the value y. So in other words, we start with the original y value, x squared, and we can either add to that value or we can subtract. So if we put a plus 2, that will shift up 2 units. So up 2 units is what's going to happen there. Now, on the other hand, we could uh, have a basic function that was y is equal to the square root of x. Now, to cause a vertical shift here, we would start with the original function, y equal to the square root of x, and we could, say, subtract a number from that old y value. And that's going to cause a shift down. Subtracting is going to cause a shift down by a unit. And then on the other hand, we could have started with something like uh, y is equal to the absolute value of x. We know what that graph looks like. Well, here's what uh, it would look like if we were shifting up or down. If we wanted to shift that graph up three units, we would start with the original y value and add three to the original y value. That's going to shift the graph up three units. So that's how vertical shifts look. Vertical shifts were, are add or subtract from, if you will, the old y value. That is, we started with y is equal to a function like x squared and we add or subtract from that. Okay, a horizontal shift. Now, horizontal shifts are going to also come from adding or subtracting numbers, but they are added and subtracted in a different way. So if we started with the basic function y equal x squared, and we wanted to cause a horizontal shift, what we would do is that we would add or subtract from x itself. So we would add the 2 to x, not 2 to x squared. So we still have the squaring, but we're adding the 2 here. Now this causes a horizontal shift, but it's in the direction that you don't expect. We would think plus would make us go right, but this is actually left 2 units. We go the opposite direction of what we would expect. Now, if we started with the function y equals square root of x, and instead of subtracting from the y value, that is, instead of subtracting from the square root of x, 
we're going to subtract a number from x. And so that minus 1 is underneath the square root because we're subtracting from x. Now this causes a horizontal shift again. But minus, we would think, goes left. But with horizontal shifts, it's in the direction opposite of what we expect. So this is going to shift right one unit. And then if we had uh, started with absolute value of x and we wanted to shift that graph, then we would have to add or subtract from the x value or to the x value. So that plus 3 in this case ends up being on the inside of absolute value because we're adding to the x. Now this causes a shift, again, opposite of the direction we expect, except we know it's horizontal. This is going to cause us to go left three units. Okay, so to get a horizontal shift, we're actually adding or subtracting, if you will, from x, not from y, okay, from x. And of course, the shift is opposite of the than the direction we normally expect when we're talking about horizontal. Now, <clears throat> let's uh, uh, let's go to the next page and actually use this information to create a couple of quick graphs, a sketching of graphs. Okay, so we're. Uh, here in this first example, we're asked to sketch the graph of y equal x squared plus 2. Well, in cases like this, we first have to understand the basic graph that we're starting with. And so we, we've got to understand that we're starting with the graph of y equal x squared. And once we know that we're starting with that graph, then we imagine, at least, or sketch a quick graph of that. A lot of times I put one graph on top of another, but here I'm wanting to get a quick sketch, and I know that the point uh, 0, 0 is on the graph, and I know the point 1, 1 is on the graph, and I know the point negative 1, 1 is on the graph. And using that information, then I know what the graph of the original function looks like. Okay, So this is the graph of y equal x squared. Now, what does the new graph look like? This is the transformation, okay? And so to figure out what the new graph looks like, we have to understand what this plus 2 causes to happen to the old graph. And remember, that's a vertical shift. And so we're going to shift. Vertical is up or down. In this case, we're shifting up two units. Okay, so that means the whole graph is going to be lifted up two units. So here's what that would look like. Let's see, here's, uh, here's one, and here's negative one. Well, I kind of got that all screwed up, didn't I? And here's one, and here's two, and here's three. So for instance, this vertex point, that bottom point, the whole graph is going to be shifted up two, so that bottom point is going to be shifted up two units, one, two. So it's going to end up being here. And then the point that we've got right here is also going to shift up two units, and so it's going to be at that position. And so that's going to be at one comma three, isn't it? so it's right there. And then the point that we've got that's here is also going to shift up two units, so it's going to go to this position, and so that would be right here, wouldn't it? Okay, and so our, our new graph then being shifted up two units is going to look like this. So this is the graph of y equal x squared plus 2. Now on the other hand, if we were asked to sketch the graph of, uh, say, y is equal to x plus a 2 in parentheses squared. Well, we once again have to understand what the basic graph we're starting with is, and the squaring operation tells us that we're starting with y equal x squared. 
And so, as we did before, we're imagining what that original graph looks like. And so we're kind of coming in here and doing the same thing we did before. We're putting a few points on the graph that we know exist. I call those landmark points because when we shift, we're going to have to shift the whole graph, but we imagine shifting the points to know where we are. Okay, so now we have to do this transformation. We're going to get a new graph, but we have to understand what new graph we're getting. And so that means we have to understand what this plus 2 caused to happen here. Now here we're adding the 2 to x above we were adding 2 to x squared, and x squared is the old y value. So we're really just adding 2 to the y value. Here we're adding 2 to the x before we square it. So we're adding 2 to the x, and this causes a horizontal shift, doesn't it? But plus 2 horizontally is opposite of what we would expect. This is going to shift not right, but left two units. We're going to shift left two units. So we get ready to see what that graph looks like. Okay. We'll say here's where one is, and here's where negative one is, and here's where negative two is, and here's where negative three is, just to give us something to work with. Now, so this vertex is going to shift how many units? Two units to the left. So it's going to be out here where x is negative 2. So the vertex is now going to end up being right here. Now the point that was here, the whole graph shifting left 2 units. So this point's going to shift left 2 units as well. And when that happens, it's going to be out here at negative 3, isn't it? So at this level, we're going to have a point that's shifted over to the left 2 units. So 1, 2, uh, one, two gets us to there. This is going to shift left two units also, and that's going to put us where the old point is, and that means we're going to have that point shifted to this position. So those three points have all been shifted two units, and so it allows us to sketch in the new graph, and this is what the new graph would look like. This is the graph of y equal x plus 2, the quantity squared, shifted to the left two units. Okay. Now, let's use this information to uh, sketch, okay, in this case, sketch the graph of y is equal to, let's say, x minus 1 in parentheses squared plus uh, 2 outside the parentheses. Well, once again, what the basic graph we're starting with is y is equal to x squared because we see the squaring operation. But there are two pieces involved when we think about this transformation, see. We, we know what the original graph looks like. We've drawn this several times, and that's why I was saying in the very beginning, we need to be able to, to sketch these graphs in pretty quickly, okay? So this is the original parabola, y equal x squared. Now, when we look at y is equal to x minus 1, the quantity squared, plus a 2, see, if we didn't have that minus 1 and that plus 2, it would just be y equal x squared. So we have to understand what each of these two pieces do. And this minus 1 causes a horizontal shift, doesn't it? But since it's a minus 1, and horizontally we shift opposite of the direction, we would expect. So this is going to shift right one unit. And that's the very first thing that we consider. And over here we have a plus two. But that's adding to the original, the y value, if you will. The minus one is actually subtracting from the x value. So this plus two outside the squaring operation, and that's the second thing we consider,
that's going to cause a vertical shift. And so that's going to shift up two units. Now, by the way, I didn't look at a particular order here. There is always a correct order to consider. And so let me tell you why I started with that minus one on the inside. Here's how we tell which particular transformations to consider first, which second, and so on. Imagine putting a value in for x. Suppose we put in a 5 for x. Before we calculated y, what would we have to do? We'd have to subtract 1 before we squared, wouldn't we? So we put a 5 in for x, we'd say 5 minus 1. Well, that tells us the first thing we have to consider is that minus 1. Now, after we subtract that 1, we'd get a 4, and then we would square it and get a 16. And after we did that, we would add the 2. So the next thing of the transformations we would consider is the adding of the 2. And so that's the second transformation to consider. But here we're doing two things. We're moving right one unit and up two units. So imagine what our new graph is going to look like. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. And negative one, negative two. This is one, two, three, four. Okay. So let's imagine the vertex. See? Take the old vertex. What's going to happen? It's going to shift right one unit and up two units. So it's going to go right one unit and then up two units. And so it's going to end up being right there. That's the vertex. Now, look at this point. It's going to shift right one unit, so that's over here, and then it's going to go up two units. So right one unit and up two units is going to put that point at this position. Now, imagine the point that right is right here. That's also going to shift right one unit and up two units, and so it's going to end up being, let's see where that would be, right one unit and up two units, it's going to end up being here, isn't it? And so with those three points, we'll know what our new graph looks like, and so this is in fact the graph of y equal x minus 1, the quantity squared, plus 2. That's pretty cool, isn't it? By knowing what those minus ones and those plus twos, how they affect the graph of the original function or the basic function. Okay, let's uh, let's see if we can look at a couple more on the next page. Okay, here, uh, as you can see, we're asked to sketch the graph of f of x equal to the square root of x plus 2 minus 1. And the, the plus 2 is under the square root, and the minus 1 is outside the square root. Now, <clears throat> it, 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 make sure you understand we're doing this without a calculator. Uh, don't use your calculator on this. You're defeating the whole purpose of understanding what's going on. Uh, if you were to do that. So, and, and you certainly will probably not be allowed to use a calculator on a test to do things like this. Okay, so here once again is the idea. We, we've got to recognize the basic function that we're moving and changing. And we see square root, and so the basic function here is y is equal to the square root of x. And it's important to know what that graph looks like for us to do what we're going to do here. Okay, and this is something that we've discussed before. Remember that the point zero zero is on the graph, the point one one is on the graph, the point four two is on the graph, and so it looks like this. Okay, and that's what y equals square root of x looks like. Now, we're needing to graph f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2 and minus 1. Now, what we have to recognize is that we have two different transformations. If we had, didn't have that plus 2 and that minus 1, it would just be 
f of x is equal to the square root of x, and we know what that looks like. So here's what we have to decide. We've got two transformations. Which is the first we consider? Well, the very first one we consider is the plus 2, because if we were actually to put an x in there, the first thing we'd have to do is add a 2 to the x. And that plus 2 is a horizontal shift, isn't it? Because we're adding or subtracting from x. And so that that so that's the first transformation we're considering. And what does that cause? That causes a shift to the left two units. Now the second transformation that we need to consider is the one that's out here because that's the the second thing that we it's not the same thing we did to do after we added two then we take the square root but that's just the normal function then after we took the square root we subtract one and so it's that minus one transformation we need to consider next and that causes a vertical shift and if vertical shifts are in the direction we anticipate minus would mean down so we're going to go down one unit okay so as we're imagining this, then we're we're thinking, okay, now we're gonna we're gonna draw. And in fact, maybe what I will do here is I'm going to lay on top of this graph the original function, just so that so that we can uh, have something to deal with. We'll call this one and this two and this three and this four and one two three four. And we'll say here is negative 1, and here is uh, negative 2, and of course maybe about here is negative 3, and there's negative 1 and negative 2, and so on, negative 3. Okay, now the original function looks like this. Okay, and I'm dashing it just so we won't be confused. That's the original function, y equals square root of x. Now, the points that I've identified, these landmark points, what are we doing? We're shifting the whole graph left to and then down one. Well, let's look at it point by point. If we take this point that's right here and shift it left to and down one, it puts us at that position there, doesn't it? And then if we look at this point and we shift left two, it's going to come over here and down one, it's going to be right there, isn't it? And then if we take this point and shift left uh, two, that's going to get us to here. And then down one, that's going to get us to here. And I don't know that I have a real good uh, graph, but we would, that would put the point right here. And so our new graph is actually going to look like this. And that's continuing to go up. But that's shifting left two units and then down one unit. And by the way, I didn't discuss this before, but what's the domain of this new function? What's the domain of, and of course that's the graph of, f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 2 minus 1. Well, what, what values are being used? See, the values that are being used are x values that are greater than or equal to negative 2. The first x value is at negative 2, isn't it? And so we could, we could write this in set builder notation, which would be the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Or we could write it in interval notation, which would be from negative 2 to infinity, but include negative 2, so we put the bracket around negative 2. And we could also tell what the range is here. The range are the y values. And so if we look at that graph, the smallest y value is negative 1. And since the graph is really going up, 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 although it looks like it flattened out there, uh, since it's going up, 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 it's just going up slowly, then the y's we're going to use start at negative 1 and go forever upwards. So y's are greater than or equal to negative 1. And so the way we would write that in set builder notation would be the set of all y's, since the y is greater than or equal to negative 1, 
or the way we would write that in interval notation, we have to understand we're talking about y values. It would be negative 1 to infinity. Now, the x values are left to right, and the y values are low to high, as we see here. So we could look at the graph and make that determination. Okay, let's, um, let's go to the next page and discuss uh, the next types of reflections, I mean the next types of transformations. Here we talked about vertical shifts and horizontal shifts. Uh, on the next page we'll talk about uh, uh, reflections. So we have uh, a type of transformation called a reflection, a reflection, and there's actually two types. There are x-axis reflections. And there are y-axis reflections. Oops. I guess I should put that lower. Now, let's imagine, okay, let's imagine starting out with uh, the graph of uh, y equal x squared. Okay, just so we have something, again, to deal with. So, here's negative 1, here's positive 1. Here's one, so we've got this point, this point, and this point, okay. And of course this is y is equal to x squared. Now, if we look at that graph and talk about, well, what does a x-axis reflection mean? Well, here's what an x-axis reflection means. We would look at that graph, and we would think about attaching the parts that are on the x-axis and rotating it or flipping it or thinking of the x-axis as a uh, as a mirror. Yeah. And so if it's a mirror, at this point that's right on the mirror doesn't change, but points that were above the x-axis end up being below the x-axis. So we would have, instead of negative 1, positive 1, we'd have negative 1, negative 1. It would be lower. It would be on the other side of the x-axis. And so the x-axis reflection of that would look this way. It's flipped upside down, if you will. Okay? That's, I'm sorry that's so ugly. Now, the way this shows up, the way we're going to see uh, have this happen, is if we have a negative sign in front of the x-squared. And that makes a lot of sense because that negative sign is giving us the opposite of what we had before. So y's that were positive before, we're putting a negative in front of the x squared, those y's are going to be negative now, and so they're going to be below the, the axis. Now, on the other hand, um, if we have a y-axis reflection, then the y-axis serves as the mirror. Okay. And, and to serve as the mirror here, then this point that is on the y-axis doesn't move. The point that was in this position on the original graph gets moved in the opposite direction here. Okay? And the point that was here before gets moved to its opposite position here. And so in this particular case, when we reflect this graph about the y-axis, it looks like the original graph. Think about just twisting that original graph about the y-axis, and it ends up looking exactly the same. And so we can't tell any difference. But to cause a y-axis reflection, what happens is we put the negative sign in front of the x before, like on the inside of the squaring. And uh, so that would cause a y-axis reflection. Now, the reason this looks the same as it did before is if we square a negative x, we actually get x squared, don't we? Negative x times negative x is just x squared. And so that's the reason that this reflected graph looks exactly like what it started as. Okay. Now, let's use this idea, though, when we're dealing with the graph of y equal the square root of x. Now, as we talked about before, an x-axis reflection is caused by a negative sign 
in front of the old y value. So in this case, an x-axis reflection would look like y is equal to the opposite of x, a square root of x. So you see that negative is outside the squaring of the square rooting operation. As before, that negative was outside the squaring operation. So this is an x-axis reflection. Now to get a y-axis reflection, the negative sign is inside the main operation. In other words, we're putting the negative sign in front of the x. And so that's what it would look like if we had a y-axis reflection. The negative in front of the x instead of the negative in front of the old y value. Okay, well, let's, let's see what these would look like then. If we take the old graph, okay, so y equals square root of x looks something like this. Okay, it looks something like this. That's, that's what we want to start with. Well, if we reflect that in the x-axis, So if, if we take that and reflect it in the x-axis, remember we're turning it about the x-axis. And so the point that is on the x-axis isn't going to move, but the points that were above the x-axis before are going to end up being below. And so this is what that graph is going to look like. So it's, it's just twisted about the x-axis. On the other hand, when we reflect about the y-axis, things that are on one side of the y-axis are going to end up on the other side. And so we're going to have a graph that looks like this instead of what we had over there. Okay. So we reflect then. See, the old graph looked like this, and we're flipping it about the y-axis. Over here, the old graph looked like this. We're flipping it about the x-axis. So it's these negative signs that cause reflections. And it's depending on where the negative sign is, whether we reflect about the x-axis or reflect about the y-axis. The negative sign outside the main operation causes an x-axis reflection. The negative sign inside the main operation, in this case square rooting, causes a y-axis reflection. So let, let me uh, summarize with a few more examples here. <clears throat> Pardon me. X-axis reflections um, involve a negative sign, and the negative sign is applied after the main operation. So, for instance, here we have to square, and then we apply the negative sign. Or if we had y is equal to uh, the opposite or the negative of the square root of x, then, of course, we have to square root, and then we apply the negative sign. Or y is equal to the negative of the absolute value of x. Once again, we have to apply the absolute value uh, operation, and then we apply the negative sign. So all of those cause x-axis reflections. That is, things that were previously positive would end up being negative. Y values previously positive would end up being negative and vice versa. So we have the orientation across the x-axis reversed. It flips it across the x-axis. Now, y-axis reflections also involve a negative sign, but it's the placement of the negative sign. So, for instance, if we had y is equal to, uh, in parentheses, the opposite of x squared, and we saw that this really wouldn't make much of a difference, but the idea is what that negative sign causes to happen. And see here, the negative sign is applied 
if you will, is applied before the main operation. It's applied to the X. To get a Y-axis reflection, you have to actually apply to the X, and then you apply the operation squaring. But likewise here, we, it does make a big difference. We have the square root of the opposite of X. Um, so the issue here, of course, is that we apply the negative sign to X before we take the square root. And some people might say, well, we can't take the square root of a negative number. You're right. That would mean that X's have to be negative. So the, the negative of a negative number is positive. And so you understand here that the domain would have to be all negative numbers. Um, and then likewise, we could have Y is equal to uh, the absolute value of the opposite of X. And uh, here again, we wouldn't be able to tell much difference when we graph this, but the idea is what causes the reflection one more time, or maybe something like y is equal to uh, uh, the opposite of x cubed. All of those uh, cases, the negative sign is applied to the x directly, and then the main operation is, uh, is invoked. So uh, these cause y-axis reflections. <clears throat> Let's look at a couple of examples uh, that, uh, of sketching graphs now. So here you can see we're asked to uh, graph y equal the opposite of the square root of x minus 3. And uh, let, me, let me write that down here so that we can uh, notice if we didn't have the minus sign here and we didn't have the subtract 3 underneath, this would just be y equal the square root of x. And we would have anticipated anyway that what we're starting with is the square root function. That's what's going to be moved around to get this graph. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sketch in y equal the square root of x real quickly. Um, 2, 3, 4, okay. And we see that we'd get a graph that looks something like this. Now, that's y equal the square root of x. That's not really what we want to do, but that's what we're going to move around. Now, the next thing we have to observe, again, is the order in which we do these. And, and so far, you may decide that the order in which we do these things, uh, these transformations, has not made a difference. Uh, but I assure you in a few minutes that we will see one where it makes a big difference, so we better get into a habit of doing it in the correct order so that we don't make a mistake later. And so the way you decide in which, which you do first, second, and third is imagining actually replacing x with a number and then seeing what operations you do. So if we uh, replace x with a 4, then the first thing we'd do is subtract a 3 before we could even find the square root. So this is the very first transformation that we're concerned about. Then we would apply the square root, and then after we applied the square root, then we would say, okay, then y is the negative of that. So this is the second transformation that we would be dealing with. Well, the first transformation is a subtraction from y directly. That is, it's under the square root. And so that causes a horizontal shift. And so that shift is going to be not to the left, but to the right, isn't it? Because it's opposite of the direction we expect. So we'll shift right three units. And then the second operation is uh, a negative sign, which is a reflection. Okay, we see that it's a reflection. And since that ref since that negative sign is applied outside the square root, that is, it's the, uh, after we do the main operation, then we know that that's an x-axis reflection. So it's going to shift everything uh, about, the, twist everything about the x-axis. Okay, well, let's go in here and let's uh, start looking at these pieces. And, and generally the way I think of these, like I've done before, is I think of, uh, these landmark points that I've just pointed out and and think about, well, what happens if I'm going to apply these to a point at a time? Well, the first thing it says is shift right three units and then reflect in the x-axis. So if I, if I shift right three units, it will make this point move to here. Now, since that's on the x-axis, when I reflect, I'm not going to change its position. 
Um, now, in this next point that I'm talking about is right here in the old graph. I'm going to shift it right three units. So it's going to come over and going to be at this position right here. But when I reflect it about the x-axis, instead of being one unit above the x-axis, it's going to be one unit below. So it's actually going to be there when I reflect it. Okay. And, uh, and then when I look at this point, it's going to shift three units to the uh, right. So that's going to make it come over to about this position. But uh, remember, this is reflected, and so instead of being two units above the x-axis, it's going to be two units below the x-axis, so it will be there. Now, what we could have thought of, okay, what we could have thought of is an intermediate step. And this intermediate step would look like this, and that is the shift to the right three units. And then we would take that step and we would reflect that resulting graph. That's after we shift to the right. We reflect that about the x-axis and you see that it puts us in this position right here. Okay. So this is the graph of y equal negative of uh, the square root of x minus 3. Now, while we're here, let's consider the domain of this function just in case we were ever asked for that. And you'll notice that the x values we're using uh, start at 3. So the domain is all of the x values greater than or equal to 3. Now, we can write that in set builder notation, or we could write it in the interval notation, which would be starting at 3 and including 3 and going to infinity. Okay? And we could also look at this and determine the range, because the range are the y values. And notice after... After we've done our work here, uh, we don't have any positive y values. All our y values are negative. And so what we really have is our y values are all less than or equal to zero because we certainly do have a y value that's on the x-axis that's zero. Uh, now, if we wrote that in interval notation, it would be from negative infinity up to zero and including zero. In any case, that's the graph that we get. On the next page, um, we'll do a couple of more, and uh, let's go to the next page. Well, uh, here we're graphing y equal uh, the square root of the opposite of x plus 1. So <clears throat> as, we, as we look at this graph, uh, let me come down here again. Uh, let me come over here. We'll notice that there are two transformations, this minus sign and this plus 1. See, if we didn't have those, it'd be y equal to square root of x. So that's our basic uh, starting position again. I've changed the scale here, I guess, a little bit. Um, one, so this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, and, of course, this is 1 and 2 and 3. Okay, so uh, we have something as we uh, began. This is y is equal to the square root of x function. Okay, a little more magnified here. Now, once again, we need to do these transformations in the correct order. And so we imagine putting an x uh, value for x. And if we did, the very first thing we'd have to say is if x was a negative 4, then we would take the opposite of negative 4. So this is the first transformation we deal with. And that, what does that cause to happen? Well, that is a, a reflection, isn't it? And that is a y-axis reflection. Now, the next thing we would do is apply the square root, and then after we apply the square root, then we would finally do the add one. And so that's the second transformation that we would be working on. And now adding 1 is adding 1 to um, the, after the square root's been applied, which causes a vertical shift rather than a horizontal shift. And with vertical shifts, it's the direction we expect. So plus would mean up. So we're going to shift up one unit. Okay. Well, if we look at the graph that we have and we reflect it about the y-axis, see, so we start with this y equals square root of x, and we reflected about the y-axis, this point's not going to move. 
but the point that we have here will end up being across the y-axis opposite, okay? And then the point that we have up here, perfect, <clears throat> will be also across the y-axis opposite. So it will be at negative 4, positive 2. So it will be up here. So if we reflected only, then this is the graph that we would get. And that's only the ref See, this is... This is actually y is equal to the square root of the opposite of x. That's having only one transformation. But now we'll apply the plus 1 next. So that's going to shift all those points up one unit. So this point will be up one unit higher. This point will be up one unit higher. And this point will be up one unit higher. Whoops. Well, I, I goofed up, didn't I? Because I, that point's not there. It's right up there. So it would have been this. And I'm sorry for that ugly graph. Okay. So that point's not there. It's right there. Shifted up one unit higher. So the new graph, I apologize for that. The new graph will actually be looking like this. And that's our final graph. Y is equal to the square root of the opposite of X plus 1. This stuff was inadvertently put in in the incorrect spots. Okay. So what have we done? We've reflected and shifted up one unit. Okay, let's, <clears throat> let's do one more at, at this point that involves uh, uh, oh over here, what's the domain of this? See, in this case uh, the domain, the x values we're using are actually negative, and that's because we have to take the opposite of them, isn't it? And so in this case, the domain um, are the x values that are less than or equal to zero. So we could say uh, the x's are less than or equal to zero, or in interval notation, we would say from negative infinity up to zero inclusive. And in this case, the range our y values that are greater than or equal to 1. And so if we were writing that in interval notation, we would say from 1 inclusive to infinity. And they go up and up and up. Okay. In this next problem, we're asked to sketch the graph of... Uh, y is equal to the opposite of x minus 1, the quantity squared, plus 3. So this is going to be a parabola, isn't it? Well, as we begin to decide how to graph this, so uh, once again, we decide on um, which transformations to apply first. And you see that we actually have three different transformations, don't we? And by the way, the underlying graph, of course, is y equal x squared, isn't it? Because if we didn't have that negative sign or that subtract 1 or that plus 3, it would just be y equal x squared. And so we might, we might put on here what y equal x squared would look like before we ever even get started, um, although that's not our particular graph. And each of these marks is a, a single unit. So this is where 2 is, and then this would be where 4 is, okay? This is negative 2, and so we would get a graph that looks something like this. Okay, now that's just y equal x squared alone. Okay. We have three transformations. The very first transformation we're going to have to deal with is this subtract 1. Okay. Because after all, if we put a value in for x, that's the first thing we're going to have to deal with. And that subtract 1 is being subtracted from x directly or before the squaring operation is applied. So that causes a horizontal shift. And since it's a minus 1, it shifts to the right, not to the left. So uh, shift right one unit. 
Okay, now the second transformation we're going to have to deal with would be uh, uh, this transformation, that's number two, because we'd have to apply it before we ever thought about adding a three, wouldn't we? We'd have to know what we're adding three to. And so that, that uh, negative sign is outside the main operation of squaring, so that causes an x-axis reflection. And then finally, the last transformation, after we calculated all those other pieces and got a number, then we'd finally add three. And so this is the very last of the three transformations we worry about. And that plus three is after the squaring operation is completed, uh, along with other things. And uh, so that causes a vertical shift. So we're going to shift. And in this case, it is in the direction that we think we're going to shift up three units. Okay, so we've got a lot of things going on, don't we? Now, <clears throat> if we do all of that, okay, it's kind of hard to think of everything going on at once. So what I really like to do is uh, think of these pieces a little bit at a time. If, uh, if, I first, if I first apply uh, the shifting right one unit, then the vertex would end up being here. And this point that we've got in this position would end up being here. And the point that we've got in this position would end up being here. I'm just shifting all of these one unit to the right. This point would end up being here, and this point would end up being here. And so after we shift one unit to the right, we're going to have a graph that looks like this. Okay, so that's after we shift one unit to the right. Now if we do an x-axis reflection, that new parabola is going to be flipped across the x-axis, isn't it? So the vertex will still be here, but the point that is in this position is going to be down here instead. And the point that is in this position, I hope you can see me so, uh, working on those points, will be in this position. It's reflected, isn't it? And the point that's way up here, instead of being way up at positive 4, it's going to be way down at negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's actually going to be down here. And similarly, the point that is uh, way up here, instead of being 4 units above the x-axis, it's going to be 4 units below the x-axis, and so it's going to be here. So after we apply number 2, and that's a pretty ugly parabola, See, here's where we are. This is, the, this is the graph of y is equal to the opposite of x minus 1 squared. We've applied 1 and 2. The last one we apply is number 3, which is to shift all of this up one unit. So the vertex is going to be here. These points are going to all be shifted up one unit. And so when we're finished... We're going to get a graph that looks like this. Okay. I know that's kind of messy to see, but I hope you see what, uh, whoops, and it goes through this point right here. I really made it ugly, haven't I? Now, what I would like to do is notice that this particular point And that particular point should be the point, see this is negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Uh, and of course this is negative 1, so that point should be negative 1, comma, negative 3. I say should be, it, it is, okay. Now what I want to do for you is verify that that point is on the graph that we're supposed to be making a graph up. Now this just going to kind of give us the idea that, that we've done this correctly. So if, uh, if we put next, uh, an x value of negative 1 into the function, what will we get? Well, let's see. We have the opposite of a negative 1 for x minus a 1 squared plus a 3. And that better give us a... Oh, I didn't. I made a mistake, didn't I? 
I made a mistake. I just shifted up one unit, but we've got to shift up three units. Oh, my goodness. Well, okay, let's, um, let's go to the next page because I've goofed this up. We're not finished. That's not right, is it? That's not right. Okay, so forget what I'm saying right here. My bad. Let's go to the next page so we can finish. Okay, I've, I've reproduced <clears throat> pardon me, what we had on the other side and, and uh, on the other page. And this was after transformations one and two. So what we see here is y is equal to the opposite of x minus one, the quantity squared. Now we have to apply that last transformation, which is a plus three, which is going to shift everything up three units, not the one that I said before. So this vertex is going to be way up here, shifted up three units. Okay. And the point that we have here will be shifted up three units, one, two, three. So it will be here. And the point that we have here shifted up three units, one, two, three. So it will be a match here. And then these uh, points way down here <clears throat> shifted up three units, one, two, three, will end up being here. And uh, this point, one, two, three, will end up being here. And so our graph, whoops. Well, I didn't do a very good job with this, did I? Because this point's really over there. I really screwed it up again. Okay, so it's this point. It's going to be shifted up three units, one, two, three, and so it will be right here. So our graph, when we're finished with all of our transformations, will be a parabola that has been done what? We've done three things. We shifted it over one unit, then we reflected it about the x-axis, and then we shifted it up three units, shifted three units upward. So that would be the graph. Now, let's go, let's go back to what I was saying before. This particular point, okay, this particular point is on the graph, and that particular point looks like it's a negative one comma negative one. So if we were wanting to uh, verify <clears throat> wanting to verify that that point was on the graph, we'd let x be negative 1, and we would see that our equation would calculate y would be negative 1. It'd have to be for that point to be on the graph. So we put a negative 1 in for x, and then we calculate. Well, of course, negative 1 subtract negative 1 is negative 2, so inside the parentheses, we're going to have a negative 2 that we're going to square. And when we square that negative 2, we get a positive 4. And then we take the opposite of that positive 4 and get a negative 4. And when we add that to 3, we get a negative 1. So that verifies that that point should have been on the graph, and our transformation shows it. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I'm wanting to do this because I want to sketch real quickly. I, I don't really care about the details. What if we would have gone in the wrong order? What if we see it? What if we would have looked at y is equal to the negative of x minus 1 squared plus 3 and decided to first um, do this, okay, and then second do this, and then third do this? So that would mean the first thing we do is shift right. And the second thing we do would be shift up. And then the third thing we do is reflect. Okay. So if we did that, I'll show you what that would look like real roughly. One, two, three, okay. So if we shift right and shift up, 
Let's just think of that first. Shift right and shift up. Then the vertex would shift right one unit and up three units, so the vertex would be right here. And uh, the other points that we would have would have a point that was right there and would have a point that was right there. This is negative, uh, I mean, this is positive one, this is positive two. One, two, three, four. So this, this would be after we do one and two. Shift right and then shift up. Now, if we next reflect, then that whole graph is going to be turned upside down across the x-axis. Now, here's where there's a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. So the vertex is going to be down here at negative 3. And the point that we have here is going to be down at negative 4. And the point we're down here will have a y of negative 4. And then the graph we would get would look like this. And you can see that's a completely different graph, isn't it? And in fact, we can verify that this is wrong because uh, we can take any point, but let's take that point. That point is the point where x is 0 and y is negative 4, isn't it? Now, if we let x be 0 in the original equation, the y we would get, we put a 0 in for x, So, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, so we're squaring negative 1, aren't we? And so y would be the negative, when we square negative 1, we get 1. And so this would end up being negative 1 plus 3, which of course is 2. So, it says the point 0, negative 4 is not on the graph. So, our graph is wrong. It says the point... 0, negative 2, I mean positive 2, pardon me, positive 2, 0, positive 2 is on the graph. And 0, positive 2, you see, look at the top graph, way up at the top, that's 0, positive 2, which is on the graph that we did originally. So the, the point of this is if we do these transformations out of order, that we did here, then sometimes we can get an incorrect graph. And so we have to be careful that we do it correctly each time. So what we've done below, out of order, mess things up. Okay, well, we have uh, a, a couple of other types of transformations that we need to look at. So uh, let's uh, move on to the next page. I really want to hit uh, two different things simultaneously here uh, because it's kind of nice to see how things fit together. So we have vertical stretching or compressing and we have horizontal stretching or compressing. Now so far when we've done shifts, vertical shifts, horizontal shifts, and reflections, we don't really distort the graph any. We're just, it's like we're picking up a graph and moving it around or flipping it. But we don't really distort the graph. Well, Stretching and compressing distorts the graph. It, it, it uh, uh, stretches it out or it compresses it and, and makes it uh, look a little bit different. Not in a different position, but actually looks a little bit different. So let's, let's first uh, talk about vertical stretching. Okay. And... These are a little harder to actually graph. And then let's compare that to vertical compressing. Okay, so if we had something that looked like y is equal to 2 times x squared, that is a vertical stretching. And see, we're multiplying by a number after we do the main operation of squaring. Or y is equal to 3 times the square root of x causes a vertical stretching. And so it's the 3. See, up above, y equal 2 times x squared makes everything twice as far away from the x-axis. y equal 3 times the square root of x makes everything 3 times as far away from, so it, it distorts it. 
Things that were one unit from the x-axis before are now three units. Things that were two units from the x-axis before now are six units. So it stretches it out. Or y is equal to, uh, say, 3 over 2 times uh, x cubed will cause a vertical stretching. Now, let's compare that to compressing. And uh, because compressing also causes, uh, is caused by a, a numeric factor, a multiplication by a number, and even in the same place, it's the kind of number that we're multiplying by. So here y equal one half x squared would cause a compressing instead of a stretching. And so what this is doing is saying everything is one half as far away. So it's closer to the x-axis. Instead of, instead of being stretched away, it's pushed towards the x-axis. And that's because our multiplier is less than one. That's the issue there. Or y is equal to uh, uh, two fifths say, times the square root of x, or y is equal to 0.75 times x cubed. So the issue here is the factor, the, the multiplier, okay, each of these, generally y is equal to a times the function, the old function, we'll put it that way, well, all of these have a situation where the absolute value of that number is greater than 1. If we're multiplying by a number that's bigger than 1 or, you know, disregarding a negative, uh, then um, that will cause a stretch. In all of these cases, the A uh, value, is, and they happen to be all positive, but the A value, the positive value of the A value, if you will, is less than 1. That causes a compression. Um, now, let's compare before we move on to what would happen if we were dealing with horizontal stretching or horizontal compressing, okay? And at, at this stage of our course, Horizontal compressing is not something that we do a lot of, but when we get to trigonometry, we do quite a bit of that. Vertical stretching, we do uh, both here and uh, and maybe later on if we're going to be dealing with trigonometry. Okay, for horizontal stretching, we're also multiplying um, with a factor. But notice the multiplication is inside. It's the multiplication is directly on the x. And notice also <laughs> that it's opposite of what we expect. That is, horizontal stretching is caused by multiplying by a number less than 1, where vertical stretching is caused by multiplying by a number bigger than 1. So, you know, this is very similar to the fact that uh, Horizontal shifting is opposite of what we expect. Horizontal stretching is also opposite of what we expect. If our multiplier is inside the main operation directly on the x, then we cause, and, and the multiplier is a number that is smaller than 1, then we get a stretching effect, a horizontal stretching effect. Now, on the other hand, we get a horizontal uh, compressing effect if our multiplier is yet on the inside, but it's a number bigger than 1. Again, that's opposite of what happened with a vertical compressing. So if, for instance, if we had y is equal to uh, uh, the square root of 3x, or y is equal to uh, uh, 5x, the quantity cubed, all of these would cause a horizontal compressing because the multiplier is directly on the x, that's it's inside the main operation, and it's a number that we're multiplying by is bigger than 1. That's just the opposite of the vertical compressing. So uh, it's a little bit confusing to keep track of, but it's something that we do need to keep track of. Well, let's, let's look at a couple of examples here uh, on the next page. <clears throat> 
And uh, particularly with, uh, well, let's look at a couple of examples. Okay, here we're asked to graph y equal to x squared. And so <clears throat> we start out with y equal x squared. See, if we didn't have that 2 multiplier in front, then uh, then we would have uh, just y equal x squared. So let's let's go ahead and plot some points for y equal x squared just so we know what we're starting with. Okay. And I'm sorry, I guess I should have done this ahead of time. Particularly since I've been making a few errors in my graphing. Okay. Okay, this is the graph of y equal x squared before we apply the transformations. Now, we'll, we'll see this actually build. We want to come up with a solutions table. And, and I'm going to do this a little differently just so that we see. Um, we're going to choose our x's and, and then this x squared would be from the original graph, and what we really want is our new y's, which is 2 times x squared. So we choose x to be 0, we square it, we get 0, and so the original point on the original graph is 0, 0. Now we're going to multiply that x squared by, zero, uh, by 2, and we'll still get 0. So the point 0, comma 0 is the point that we're going to plot, and that's this point. Now if we choose x to be 1, then x squared is also 1, but when our y is 2 times x squared, which is 2. So the point on our new graph is 1, 2. And 1, 2 is this point. Now notice, if we compare it to what we had before, our new point is 2 units from the x-axis rather than 1. It's twice as far away. Okay, well let's choose x to be 2. Well in the old graph, y would be x squared, which is just 4. But in the new graph, y is 2 times x squared, which is actually 8. So our point is 2 comma 8. 2 comma 8 is way up here. And see, this is the position on our old graph. It's 4 units from the x-axis. The new point is 8 units. It's twice as far away. Okay, so, and we could have done that in a similar fashion by choosing x to be negative 1, then our y on the original graph is negative 1 squared, which is 1. But on our new graph, it's 2 times that amount, which is 2. And so we would have this point on the graph compared to the original. We're still twice as far away from the x-axis. Now, in this case, we had this point on the graph, which is 4 units from the x-axis. And then we would then, instead of being 4 units away, we would be eight units away, twice as far, and that is associated with x being negative two. See, on the original graph, we would square x and would get a four. So four units away from the x-axis, but on our new graph, we multiply that x squared by two and we get eight. So we have the point negative two comma eight, which is the one that I've shown. So if we actually sketch this graph in, then we're going to have a graph that looks like this. Now, I recognize that this looks like maybe we pushed the sides in, but you saw how this developed. We actually pulled the points up, which caused that vertical stretch. So vertical stretching on a parabola causes it to be more narrow, and that's an important thing to remember. Vertical stretching on a parabola causes it to be more narrow. Okay, let me set up for our uh, next graph. Because we're going to sketch this y equal one half x squared, I've gone ahead and put the y equal x squared graph in. Well, we'll kind of, I think, do the same type of thing we did uh, with this previous graph. We'll uh, maybe see how this builds as we, uh, okay, we're graphing y is equal to one half x squared. So when we choose x to be 0, x squared is 0, and the old point, of course, is 0, 0. That's the original vertex, of course. And um, uh, our y for us is 1 half times x squared, which would also be 0. 
So once again, the point that we're going to plot at zero, zero, so this point is on our new graph as well. Okay, now when we choose x to be 1, before we got uh, y is just x squared, which is 1. But here, our y is 1 half times x squared, which is 1 half. And so the new point, the point on our graph is 0, 1 half. Excuse me, 1 comma 1 half. 1 comma 1 half. And you'll notice 1 comma 1 half is right here. And it's kind of crammed in there, but notice before... Our point was at a y value of 1. It was 1 unit from the, y, uh, the x axis. Now our y value is 1 half. It's half the distance that it was before. Okay. When you choose x to be 2, when we square x, we get 4. So our old point was 2 comma 4. But here, our y value is 1 half of x squared. So it's 1 half of 4, which is 2. So the point on our graph is 2 comma 2. Well, 2 comma 2 is this point right here. Now, we used to be at this point. See, that's 4 units from the x-axis, but now we're just 2 units from the x-axis. We're half as far away. So that has the effect of, of scaling it back by a half, and it's like pushing that point down. If we choose x to be 3, well, in our old graph, y was just x squared, 3 squared, which is 9. But for us, y is 1 half times x squared, which we'll say is 4.5, 4 and a half. Let's just, for our sake here. So our point is 3 comma 4 and a half, or 4.5. Well, that would be a point that is right here. Now, previously, we were nine units away from the x-axis, but now we're just, when x was three, but now we're just four and a half units away. So again, it has the effect of pushing that down or scaling it back by a half. Now, if we did this for the other uh, values that were negative, then we would get points that looked like this. And so when we sketch this in, what's going to happen is we're going to have a parabola that is wider. See, it looks uh, pretty ugly, isn't it? Kind of run out of room. It looks like we pulled the parabola apart, but you know the way this happened, we pushed those points down, didn't we? We scaled them back is what ended up really happening. And so... Uh, when we have a multiplier in front of x squared that is a number smaller than 1, um, the absolute value of it at least is smaller than 1, then we have the effect of making the parabola wider. Okay, that's a, an important concept. Now, when we're dealing with other functions like uh, square roots, you know, it's a little harder maybe sometimes to see. Sketch uh, y is equal to 2 times the square root of x. Well, the idea, real quickly, we'll go through this. Uh, the idea here is that the original graph would look something, well, I got kind of carried away there, didn't I? The original graph would look something like this, y equal to square root of x. But if we were actually plotting y equal 2 times the square root of x, you know, it might be easiest just to set up and calculate some points. If x is 0, then y would be 2 times the square root of 0, which is 0. So this point's on the graph. If x is 1, then y is 2 times the square root of 1, which would be 2. So that would be this point on the graph instead. And if x is, is uh, 4, you know, I'm kind of out of, out of room, then y would be 2 times the square root of 4, which would be 4. If this is where 4 is, then we would be up here, wouldn't we? So you'd be at that point. So it has the effect, if you see, of stretching that graph out, and it distorts it some, is what it boils down to. It distorts it. I, I guess we ought to finish off by uh, uh, looking at a a compression uh, or ex I mean a horizontal uh, stretch okay instead of a vertical stretch
And uh, we'll do that on the next page. Well, here we're asked to graph y equal the square root of 2x. And let, let me let me remind you up here in a little box. Y is equal to 2 times the square root of x. Uh, that 2 that we see, see here causes a vertical stretch. And the vertical part comes from the fact that we're multiplying the, the multiplier is outside the main operation. It's, the multiplier is not on x, it's on the square root. And that causes a vertical change. Now, if it's multiplied by 2, it causes a stretch. If it's multiplied by a half, it causes a compression or a shrink, sometimes it's said, it's said to be. Now, in this case, the multiplier, okay, uh, is on x directly. And so what we have here that, that multiplier being on x is a horizontal change. It's a horizontal distortion. And the fact that, uh, that it's horizontal, then it's opposite of what we expect. Since we're multiplying by a 2, this is going to be a compression rather than a stretch. If we were multiplying by 1 half, okay, see if we had y is equal to the square root of 1 half times x, then again, it's horizontal because we're multiplying on the x directly before we do a square root. But uh, the multiplier, when it's smaller than 1, causes a stretch. There's a little bit of stuff to kind of keep track of, isn't it? But for us, we have a compression. Now, that's what we're anticipating. So let's, um, let's set up a coordinate axis here just so we have something to work with. And let's do this kind of freehand. And let's make this one and this two and this three. And so about here is one and about here is two and about here is three. And of course, maybe about here is four. This is one, two, three. Now in our original graph of just a square root, it would look uh, like this, wouldn't it? This is just a square root function. So that's what y equals the square root of x looks like. Now, let's, let's imagine, so this is a little more difficult for us to deal with um, because of uh, we're having to apply a square root after we multiply. So uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Um, well, this isn't, like, this isn't working out like I'm hoping for it to work out. Okay. If we choose x to be 0, on the old graph we'd have y as the square root of x. On our new graph we'd have y as 2 times x and then square root, but that's still going to be 0. So this point's still on the graph. And of course, since we're compressing toward the y-axis, here things that are on the y-axis aren't being moved. Okay. Um, now, if we choose um, if we choose x, this is going to be a little different. If we choose x to be one half, well, we didn't really graph that previously. We'd have to take the square root of one half, and we didn't do that. But for our new graph, for our new graph y will be the square root of 2 times our x value. And so that's just a square root of 1, which is 1. So our y value would be 1. So here's where x is equal to 1 half, and our y value would be 1. And you can see what basically has happened is we've taken this point in a, in a roundabout way, and we've made it half as far away from the y-axis. Instead of being one unit away, it's one half unit away. Okay, let's now uh, take the x value 2. Okay, when we take the x value 2, well, we didn't use the x value 2 to plot previously, did we? We didn't use that value. But uh, here, if we take the x value to be 2, we have y as the square root of 2 times our x value. 
And of course, that's the square root of 4, which is going to end up just being 2. So 2 comma 2 is on the graph. That means this point's on the graph. We'll compare that to this point. Okay, we've really made, we've kind of pushed that point in a, in a round, in a sort of way. we pushed that point toward the y-axis. You know, instead of this, this point is four units from the y-axis. This point instead is two units from the y-axis. So we pushed it toward the y-axis, and we didn't really know we were doing that. Now, um, anyway, I think that that will give us an idea that this graph is going to look like this, okay? And so this is, in effect, pushed it toward the y-axis, but it's kind of hard for us to tell that in advance. We almost needed to plot points to see that happen, didn't we? And that's what we've done here. So um, horizontal stretching and compressing is, is kind of real difficult without doing points. Uh, vertical stretching and uh, compressing is not quite as difficult to understand what's going to take place, but, uh, but it is uh, also sometimes difficult to do without plotting some points. And the idea is, what do we expect the overall picture to look like, the overall graph? And that's what we're trying to come up with now. Well, I think this is about, uh, about all I have to say about transformations. So uh, I'm going to sign off, and uh, good luck to you on your homework. Uh, I'm sure you'll do well.